Hello and welcome to another edition of What's Up Missoula. Today we have with us Gary Kammerer and he is representing the Delta Society Therapy Dogs and Star Dogs Services of Missoula. And um, this is the What's Up Missoula show where we interview people that are representing nonprofits. This is a very important nonprofit. Um, in Missoula and what we do here with the therapy dogs is um, we have somebody who trains them that's what he does and Gary is going to explain to us how a dog is trained and how your dog may qualify to be trained Gary let's talk a little about these therapy dogs and what the Delta Society is all about Delta Society is an organization in Seattle Washington that started back in the late 1970s and it's an organization that tries to set standards for a therapy dogs, uh, set standards for them, a criteria which all the dogs must meet in order to be certified by them to do so. They also are getting into service dog activities, but uh, I'm mainly involved with therapy dogs. And uh, they started this organization, they have uh, I am also an evaluator for Delta Society here in the Missoula area about three, four times a year. We have evaluations mm -hmm. in which people bring their dogs in, go through a series of exercises, and then if they pass the exercises, they can qualify to be a Delta therapy dog. Now, what's Pet the partners. Pet partners Pet is what partners. they're called. Yes, yes. Now you brought a doggy with you, and this is Jeb, and he's so well behaved. And he is a therapy dog. Yes, he is. He's right. a 10-year-old Border Collie. He's, um, he's had quite a well-rounded life. He's, got, he's an AKC champion. He's got a, uh, uh, an obedience title. He loves to herd sheep. He got a herding title. But the most important thing he does, and we've done over the years, is therapy dog work. It's by far and away the, the, uh, the, the best thing he does. Okay. So tell me, what is the difference between a therapy dog and a service dog? Service dogs are much more, <clears throat> they're more specifically and trained to higher levels most of the time. Some of them, depending upon what the needs are, may turn lights on for people, retrieve, pick things up off the ground. Uh, uh, sometimes they can sense when uh, seizures are coming on, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Therapy dogs have to be under control by people. They have to be well versed in basic obedience. And uh, they also have to be comfortable around strangers and really like people. Mm -hmm. They go in and they try to make people happy, feel happy in a number of circumstances. We visit various places, and their job is to accompany. Be a, they accompany me, we go and visit and let people pet dogs and receive therapy from them by doing so. Now can any dog become a therapy dog? Any dog can. Uh, there's no qualification. It doesn't have to be a purebred. It can be mixed, mixed breed. Not only dogs, but horses, uh, llamas, rabbits, cats. I've evaluated a few cats that have passed that. number of animals can qualify for this and uh, 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 any dog, any dog can qualify to do it as long as they got the right temperament and the right makeup. They're under good control and they like people. That's the important thing. And how old? Any age? Any age. They must be at least a year of age mm -hmm. in order to be cert or evaluated. Sometimes I've worked with people who have younger dogs even from the puppy stage, you try to give them ideas on what they can do with their puppies in order to kind of groom them for therapy dog work, getting them well socialized, basic obedience training, that sort of thing. So uh, they have to be a year old to get evaluated, but you can start working with them at a younger age. And so you offer the obedience training also as part of the Star Dogs? I do that, and I, uh, I have worked individually with people on this. I also run group obedience classes in the Missoula area and down the Bitterroot and I tell people if you want your dog to be uh, certified as a therapy dog with Delta Society they have to have a basic understanding of obedience it's very important we evaluate that and the dog must be under control by their handlers very very important so is the therapy dog training different than the obedience training um, the different 
you, you have basic obedience and therapy dog training too, but as far as the training is concerned, getting the dog well socialized, getting them to encounter strangers and different people in different settings and situations is very, very important. Can they take this dog down to a park or downtown and people walk up to pet it? Is the dog comfortable with that? Do they seem to enjoy that? Do they inspire confidence in the people that approach them that, hey, look at that nice dog. I think I'd like to pet that dog and that sort of thing. So that's involved too. And it's not real structured training, just getting the dog out and getting them around people, maybe older people, younger people, people in wheelchairs of it all possible, that sort of thing, acclimating them towards that sort of uh, um, ability to do that thing is very, very important. So now, um, is this the situation where, you know, you might see someone in a grocery store and the dog has some kind of a vest on that says, is that a service dog training and th therapy dog training? Um, as far as vests on the dogs are concerned, service dogs can wear these vests, oftentimes do, mm -hmm. and therapy dogs, there's vests available for them too. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the important things to understand about the difference between service dogs and therapy dogs is that, and Delta Society is very adamant about this, Th therapy dogs are, let's start with service dogs. Service dogs under the law are, can accompany their handler anywhere they go, restaurants, stores, mm -hmm. just airplanes, just about everywhere. They, they are allowed to accompany them under the law. Therapy dogs do not have this right. We can't just walk into, hey, I got a therapy dog here, you gotta let me in a grocery store. Delta is adamant about that, that therapy dogs are not service dogs in that respect. So yeah, they can both wear a vest, but they have different qualifications on where they can go and what they can do. Mm -hmm. So um, is this a situation where, uh, have you ever seen one start misbehaving for some reason? Or I know you said something uh, about insurance. What's the insurance okay. for? Okay, one of the advantages for as far as becoming a therapy dog is concerned is that if you pass the evaluation for Delta Society, you pass that evaluation, you are covered up to a million dollars for liability reasons with the dog. You visit somewhere, you're visiting with the dog, somebody trips over the dog, breaks a leg or something like that, there's liability coverage on that. There are certain qualifications for that, but, but they're available. Uh, uh, so that's an important thing to understand. They have this liability insurance coverage. As far as seeing any dogs misbehave, um, I've never really have or have heard about it. There are some dogs who can have off days. They can have bad days. They just aren't feeling good that day. You might take them to visit and all of a sudden you notice they're they're not paying attention or they look like they just aren't comfortable in what they're doing that day. Dogs, like people, can have bad days, okay? So we have to kind of watch that, and if the dog is acting in that manner, it's good to remove them from the situation and maybe try again another day. Now, you say you have, you told me earlier that you did trainings about three or four times a year. And oh. so people can call you or email you, and you'll tell them when the trainings are. And is that okay, for the that would, therapy dog training? That's actually evaluations is what I'm, oh, an I'm evaluator. Sorry, I'm an evaluator, okay. and we do those three to four times a year in Missoula. Mm -hmm. We have been doing them at Community Medical Center for the most part. They've been very nice to us down there. They love our dogs. They welcome us with open arms, and we really enjoy going there. But three or four times a year, I hold evaluations. There are certain guidelines that must be followed for a person to get their dog ready to be evaluated. They contact me, I let them know what the guidelines are, what they've got to do. I've got to receive some information from them ahead of time to kind of do a little screening ahead of time on their dogs. And then they come to Community Medical Center, they're, they're given a time to be evaluated. They come in, they're tested on what kind of control they have with their dogs basic obedience, sit down, stay and come, walking the dog on the leash, 
are they walking the dog or are, is the dog walking them? We look out for that sort of thing. Uh, how they react interacting with a, another dog. Another dog is brought into the room. If they get all barky and excited and out of control on that, we can't qualify them for that. They got to be under control. They can be interested and, you know, and curious about it, but they got to be under control. That's the skills part of the test. The next part of the test is called the aptitude part. The dog encounters various scenarios in which people will be on walkers, they'll be um, in wheelchairs, uh, they'll be uh, approached and then pet a dog uh, or, or let a person in a walker pet the dog. They'll be yelling and arguments going on the side representing a stressful situation. Can the dog tolerate that? Some dogs are sensitive. They don't like stressful situations. We screen on that. Then there's overall examinations, hugging the dog, clumsily petting the dog, touching, lifting all four feet up off the ground one at a time. That's a way to being handled. It's very important because when you go to visit people, they like to hug dogs, they like to do all kinds of stuff, and it's good to know ahead of time whether the dogs can do these things or not. Uh, it, the evaluation process takes about 45 minutes, and when it's done, I go over with them if they passed or did not pass. Nine out of ten dogs pass. Usually the people know what they're bringing in. They you know, they know ahead of time what to do. And then there's certain uh, things they have to do with Delta. They got to do a little prep work. They got to do uh, get a home study manual to read about Delta's policies and understand what the qualifications are for insurance coverage and various other things. And it's very thorough. But I have worked with people over the years that are in other organizations too besides Delta and they're fine, fine organizations, but I've had some people tell me that they're aware of these other organizations, they like the standards that Delta sets, they kind of like it, it's, it's, the standards may be a little higher in some respects sometimes, but they, they, they think Delta is a good organization. Usually the people that show up to be evaluated, are they usually people that you've already worked with their dogs? In some cases, yes. I've had people come from Sheridan, Wyoming, Billings, oh. and uh, up in the Flathead area, and, and that I've never seen before, but I've talked with on the phone, they've come down. Uh, I've had other people that have come out of some of my obedience classes, and they've come from that. I've had some people that have come in. I always need help in those evaluations when I run them. I'll tell people, if you're interested possibly in getting your dog evaluated, why don't you come and help us out? I need helpers. I need bodies in there to help me with. And so they can help out and, and be one of the helpers and see what goes on. Then they can say, yeah, I think my dog's ready. No, I better work on this a little bit too. It's a very good idea for him. So uh, uh, that's always a good thing to do. And other people uh, have, uh, I've done, I've worked one-on-one -on -one with them privately and put their dog through what I call a mock evaluation. It's not, not official. I put them through the exercises. I tell them after each exercise, yeah, he did that good. You better work on this with him or that with him. Uh, and I try to let them know ahead of time what their strengths and weaknesses are. And sometimes by doing that, they uh, feel like, okay, my dog's ready or it's not ready. And if they need extra work, sometimes I'll help them with that too to help them whatever the weakness might be, whether it's obedience or socialization and that sort of thing. If somebody wants to someday, you know, purchase a dog or be given a dog and then um, think of its future as being a therapy dog, what age would you say someone should start training their dog? Well, I'll tell you, well, the first thing I would think about, if I got a puppy, mm -hmm. and the first thing I would think about is how well those puppies were socialized by the breeder who had them, how well they're socialized, very, very important. When those dogs, as soon as, even before their eyes open up, some breeders will have, uh, have uh, people hold the little puppies and start petting them and talking to them. Then as they go older, eyes open up and this and that, handled and talked to by lots of people. I had, the breeder I got Jed from lives in the Coeur d'Alene area and she did that. She had people, she's a dog trainer too, had people petting those dogs all the time. Wonderfully social, he loves people. And that had a lot to do with it. So they can be starting to be trained a couple of days out of the womb basically on that. And and then getting a dog, I think you know, I think puppies should be at least seven weeks old before you get a puppy. 
Uh, any younger than that, sometimes they aren't really totally socialized, ready to leave weaned. mom. Yeah, yeah, not weaned and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But then getting the dog and getting them in, um, uh, the, all their uh, vaccinations and getting that out of the way, starting to take them out and socialize them around people, doing basic obedience. You can get a seven, eight week old puppy and start teaching them basic obedience. They don't have to be six months old. You mm -hmm. can start younger and uh, to start doing that. but. You know, uh, just raising your puppy in a good manner and treating it properly and motivating it and that sort of thing. There's definite things that people can start off doing right off the bat to get and the dogs it, ready. Doesn't it make a happier dog, a dog that is trained for no matter what, even if it's not used for therapy, but I think that a dog that's given a job to do and knows, understands what you want of it, doesn't that just make a happier it's, dog? I, you know, I always, rec of course, I do a lot of obedience training. I recommend all dogs should have some sort of obedience training. I think mentally stimulating them, not just throwing them balls and letting them exercise is important, but mentally stimulating them is very, very important. It, uh, I think it's the best way, it's the best quality time a person can spend with a dog of almost any age is doing some sort of good training with them. It's you and the dog, and I tell people when I'm working with them, shut off your cell phones and everything else. Just spend a good quality half hour with that dog, mentally stimulating it, making it think a little bit, and doing it in a proper manner. But yes, I think all dogs, we'd have, if more people would obedience train their dogs, we'd have a better dog population everywhere. It'd make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Probably the, I know for sure I'd almost bet money on this that the Humane Societies wouldn't have as many dogs coming in if they were obedience trained. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that. So what do you think some people should, people should consider before even getting a dog? Boy, there's a lot of considerations that come into what is the setting for the dog? What is your home setting? Where uh, do you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, confined area for them to run in and exercise in? Is it an apartment? Uh, it, would a big dog fit into your environment comfortably or would a small dog be better? Um, I think going, if you're going to get a dog from a breeder, is to go and call around and find out what you're looking for. Visit the breeders, visit the, the sire and the dam, the mother and the father of the puppies to see if they got good temperament. Pet, pet them, spend time alone with them. If they have good temperament, it doesn't guarantee that all the puppies will, but the chances may be better. The temperament of the puppies are going to be good. Um, and, uh, and there's books out telling you about the various behaviors, and the Internet has them too, and about types of dogs, their behavior, and good homes, and so forth with them. If people would do a little more homework before they get a dog, again, I think we'd have a better setup with the Humane Society. You might be put out of business if that were to happen. People were, uh, would uh, uh, do a little more preparation into it. It's, we get, we, we, we get dogs compulsively. Oh, honey, this one licked our hand. This is our dog. This has got to be our dog. There's a lot of cute puppies and a lot of puppies that'll lick people's hands, you know. But not sometimes it's not necessarily the uh, the best dog for that person. You got to right. you got to do your homework. Really important. And we had talked earlier about how dogs are pack animals and they really need to be around. Uh, n another body, another dog, and or a cat or a person. You leaving them alone is probably not a good idea for long periods of time. It's they are day. pack animals. Yes, they are, and uh, they're not like cattle. We can go out and throw a little hay at them every now and then, and kind of ignore them for a cattle. few days. <laughs> yeah. You know, they aren't yeah. that way. They mm -hmm. need to be nourished. They need to be. They need to be uh, nurtured, they need to be trained, they need to be disciplined, they need to be loved, they need to be interacted with, they shouldn't be left alone for long periods of time. Uh, they like human contact. Sometimes having another dog is a good idea to do too. Personally, I recommend people don't get sibling puppies. I, that's a thing with me and I'm not gonna get into it right now, but sometimes training a dog with a sibling dog around they pay more attention to the sibling dog than they do to you. It can be tricky, but anyhow, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's it's important to keep certain things in mind when you're uh, getting dogs as to 
what kind of dog do you want to have? Are you going to do a lot of active, a lot of, you're going to get out and hunt with it? Or are you going to, uh, you're going to get into agility? Or is it basically going to be one you want to lay at your feet while you watch a football game or something like that? You want to, and sometimes you shouldn't get a dog. And, you know, I, maybe I, get a cat instead. No, and a cat might be better or just, uh, Dogs are a responsibility, Huge. you know, and it seems like the older I'm getting now to get, I'm thinking in the future, am I going to get puppies again? Do I want to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and start taking them out to the bathroom and have them chew up my slippers and stuff like that? I don't know. you got to take and all these things. And it's a long commitment. And it is. Yeah, very uh, long. You figure 10 to 15 years. Why not spend a little more time doing your homework? Wait six months. Look around for six months to find that one you think is the best puppy for you. Because again, 10 to 15 years, that's a long time it in our life. It is a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And they have such deep feelings. It's, they make it so obvious. So yeah. I know, I remember with um, my dog when she was a puppy, and I just thought I'd tell this story just to warn people because what happened is she was about, I don't know, nine weeks old. And I was taking her for these walks around this park to train her, to start to train her a little bit. And I remember she would sit down. And I would think, what's wrong with you? You know, you want me to carry you everywhere. And when I went to the vet with her for some shots or something, he said, you know, Ricky, this is just a little puppy. She can't go on really long walks with you. When she sits down, she want, you need to pick her up. She's tired. You could actually cause, um, I guess, damage to her hips or something if you force her. And I've seen people in parks, so they're sort of pulling the little puppy along. The puppy's trying to just sit down. and. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, you know, you bring up a very good point. That is very good. We get puppies, they got to be eased into some of this yeah. stuff. Uh, it makes me think yesterday I was at PetSmart and I'm not, you know, I just want to admit, I, I saw two people in there that had little itty bitty puppies. They look like siblings. They could have been much more than six weeks. Mm -hmm. Five, six, maybe seven weeks, I don't know. But these little puppies were going around and they were kind of screaming and looking around and seeing all these big dogs in oh, there. Yeah. And that dogs that go through what's called, puppies go through what's called fear stages. You know, if they see something or hear something that really scares them at a young age, it could last with them the rest of their lives. So you want to socialize them, you want to start doing them, but let them slowly but surely gain confidence in those early days and don't try to do too much too soon with them. I think that's really important. It's a very yeah. good point. Yeah. Well, um, the other thing is that um, I wanted to go into where you visit and where people, if they have a service dog, all the places that they can go in Missoula. Let's talk about that with the dogs. Okay. I've been a pet partner with Jed and one other dog that I had before him, and uh, I had just have another one of my border collies just got recently got certified, and we have been visiting various places over the years. You can basically go anywhere where they'd like to have therapy dogs visit. They can go anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, hospitals, um, uh, schools, uh, hospices. I've been to that, um, nursing homes. Uh, anywhere, and just about anywhere, as long as you're requested to come. Delta Society points this out very, very carefully in their uh, their manuals and stuff like that about how to how to approach a new facility and what you do, how you let them know what Delta is and that sort of thing. But we've been visiting for 11 years at over 11 years now at Community Medical Center. And it's wonderful, wonderful stories, wonderful visits I've had there over the years. We go a few times a year, the week before final week, we go to um, uh, the University of Montana and the students are, are preparing for finals, studying for finals, and we sit in the UC Center and they come by and pet our dogs. It's one of the highlights of the year for me. I really enjoy that. Kids and that's like called, it. And that's called Stressless S Week? Stressless Week. Yeah, put on by the Curry <laughs> Health Center out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gone to schools. I've sat down. I taught school for 20 years. Uh, and I sat down, went to schools, and sat down with first graders and read them stories about dogs who became therapy dogs and stuff. Uh, I visited hospice. hospice you always have the dog with you. Always have the dog with us. They got to be on leash too when they when they visit with us, and um, and uh, nursing homes. I've gone to that, 
and uh, it all depends where you want to go. You can go anywhere you, that they'll accept you. There's a way you can go anywhere. You don't have to go to certain areas that we visit. You might go to something totally different. Okay. But um, it's very, very gratifying work. The most gratifying work I do with dogs is therapy dog work. If I could only do one thing, that would be it. That's wonderful. Yep. Well, we uh, just have a couple minutes left, and I thought we should mention also about heat conditions for dogs in cars. In the summertime. Today is a very warm day as we're doing this, and um, I, you, you hear stories every year about dogs perishing inside of hot cars. Well, I had the windows cracked a little bit. That doesn't make any difference. Dogs and heat just do not mix. Yeah, because well. I've seen people park like in under a shade tree, and the windows are up, or one window's down and the other one's up. I mean, well, that's better than direct sun, but yes, even that, I, I don't, I, I just. Um, you I, leave I, your dog home. I know we talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I, I, for instance, today when I'm done here, I got to run back down to Stevensville. We're going to get in the car. I do have to make one stop, but I told them that I'd bring my dog in with me. And so I said, okay, bring him on in. I got some business to take care of and do that. But then I'm going to head home. I'm just not going to leave him around. Too dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's really inhumane to do that to a dog. And then I did, I, I hope I have one more minute. And if I do, I just saw, was it this morning? Yes, this morning, a man, I heard this, I heard this man yelling. And I looked around, it was a young man in his backyard, and he um, was yelling at something on the ground. And then I saw him put his arms up and kick, and this dog yelped. And then he just yelled again and just put his arms up like he was just so disgusted with this dog. And wouldn't you say someone like that who can't help but kicking his dog, that maybe he should rethink and turn the dog into some place uh, and let someone when else When I have hear it. about treatment like that with dogs or any animals, I, only I, have like 30 I, seconds. I really don't know how to respond. Yeah, people like that don't need dogs. They should get rid of the dog. Yeah, they should Take it to a shelter, away. and the chances are it's a decent dog. That dog's going to find a good home. I've yeah. seen it happen a lot of times. Yeah, because if the dog's misbehaving and, and you don't know what to do with it, you know, there's other people that can help the dog. You betcha. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Gary. That was okay. great. Okay. Nice visiting with you. Same here. Good luck to you. Thank you.